Two major arrests have been made in connection to a road rage shooting on I-65. A six-year-old girl was shot during this incident, severing her spine. Both suspects are expected in court this morning. Jim Stratman is live downtown with new details released by Metro Police. Jim, good morning. Yeah, that's right, Eric and Haley. We know that two more people have been arrested in connection to this case. Initially, police arrested 33 year old Jordan Rivera, saying that he had possession of a weapon. Uh, he is a convicted felon. That's what he was charged with. Now, this all happened during that road rage incident back in July. But we're told that police are going to be announcing that or they have already announced two other people arrested, saying that those two people also shot into the car that Onyx was sitting in. Now, you'll remember now, these two people, Metro Police say, are 22-year-old Edward Sark of Clarksville. He was arrested on Tuesday. Sark accused of firing a handgun several times towards that car, saying one of those bullets hit Onyx and severed her spine. Now, LMPD also arrested 33-year-old Shelby Bisconer of Louisville. According to her arrest citation, police believe that she also fired several shots at the SUV that Onyx and her family were in. Back on July 10th, police say three motorcyclists in the SUV got into a road rage incident on I-65 out near the outer loop. Now that issue continued all the way up to the ramp at University Boulevard when the SUV hit one of the motorcyclists. That's when police say that Biscoder and Sark fired even more shots at that SUV. Now police arrived and they said that they found a handgun on Biscoder and another handgun on Rivera. Onyx suffered a severed spinal cord as a result of that shooting. She was released from the Fraser Rehab Center about two months later. WHAS 11 was there for her discharge. Onyx's mother, China, calls her progress simply a miracle. A wheelchair might be Onyx's new normal, but her doctors and her mom say that she never lost her light. Bisconer is charged with wanton endangerment. We're told that Rivera is going to be charged with possession of a handgun by a convicted felon. Sark is also going to be charged with wanton endangerment, four counts of wanton endangerment, and an additional assault charge is going to be uh, added on to his list of charges. Now, we expect Sark and Bisconer to be in court a little bit later on today. They're expected to have their arraignments this morning. We, of course, will keep you updated as we learn more. Eric, Haley. Jim, thank you. Thir 26 people across Louisville and Southern Indiana are behind bars this morning after a massive FBI operation called Operation Frozen River. These are the people taken into custody. Their ages range from 23 to 55. A federal grand jury issued a total of 34 indictments. That means more arrests are expected. Now, we were tipped to one of the spots where the FBI focused its investigation. It was Northwestern Parkway in Portland. We know four different indictments involving meth, fentanyl, and illegal guns stem from that location. The FBI says it first started investigating that in January of 2021. Now, the eight people that you now see on your screen are not yet in custody. There are active warrants, though, for their arrest. Of the 26 others who are already in custody, some were in court yesterday. Others are expected to face a judge today. If convicted, they face minimum prison sentences of 10 years. And this is the man that Metro Police believe is responsible for a string of attacks against women in PRP and Valley Station. Take a good look at your screen. It's really hard to see him, but commit some of those little things to memory. The shoes, the sweatshirt, the sweatpants. Now, police say he is a serial robber located in southwest Jefferson County. According to police, he's expected to... Uh, be, or he is connected to at least six attacks since June and one attempted robbery. So again, if you know anything about the suspect, if you recognize anything, call the anonymous tip line 574-LMPD. You can also submit a tip through the online portal. JCPS bus drop-off times have been consistent this week, according to Superintendent Dr. Marty Polio. At last night's board meeting, he said students are being dropped off before or around 7 p.m. Now, the majority of final drop-offs, he says, are before 630. But now, parental concerns are focused on overcrowded buses. Dr. Polio says that issue cuts to the heart of the overall problem. Yes, we can reduce the amount of kids on a bus, but then we're going to have to stop transporting certain kids. I mean, that's, that's, there is no other way around it. I mean, that is what we've gotten down to. The heart of this whole thing is, you know, we're going to, if 
we're going to improve efficiencies, we're going to have to make some tough decisions on who gets transported to school. Dr. Polio said his team will monitor the upcoming weeks to determine what changes need to be made. Any identified changes will be made around fall break, which is set for the first week in October. Now we're expecting another update on transportation improvements when the board meets again next month. The JCPS board also voted to lower its property tax rate, but the district will still make more money. Last night, the board approved a rate of 76 cents per $100 in assessed value on real property. If your home's valued at $100,000, you'd pay 760 in school tax. It's down from last year's rate of 76.3 cents. JCPS expects the new tax rate to generate more than $711 million in revenue. That's up 4% from last year. The district said <laughs> changes were made because property assessments went up. Now, there's still no decision this morning on whether a dangerous house in Highview will be torn down, but the city says it is preparing for that option anyway. Agents with the Environmental Protection Agency have been at a neighboring home on Applegate Lane this week removing mercury. Now, we heard from them for the first time Tuesday. WHAS 11's Grace McKenna and Chief Photojournalist Philip Merle learn more about what's next. EPA officials said Tuesday they are waiting to hear from contractors and other partners before they do make a final recommendation about what to do with that main house. Chuck Berry, the EPA coordinator working out of Applegate, did say manually removing the chemicals wouldn't be safe, but there could be mechanical methods. This week, though, the EPA's focus is on 6211 Applegate, where it was determined mercury remediation was necessary. The mercury was found inside and outside of the home when the EPA visited Louisville earlier this month. Barry described visible beads of mercury found on site and detected with air monitoring devices. This week, the EPA will be removing the driveway of the home, cleaning tile, and eventually removing the carpets while looking for mercury beads. That's just a slow, methodical process that takes a lot of time and effort uh, and a lot of work by our contractors to um, just be as focused as they can while they work it. It's hard to find sometimes. The EPA anticipates it will take three days to clean out the mercury. That process started today. Barry says they did find some other chemicals in 6211 Applegate in small contained amounts. Right now, city officials do say that that mercury is not a health hazard to people who stay outside of the area of the home. And in the meantime, while waiting on the EPA's assessment, they are still planning for a controlled burn. In Highview, Grace McKenna, WHAS 11 on your side.